long-term relationship with. Yes, we had seen her wrestle NDLEA officials when they came to arrest Mubad. But we were not aware that they had held a secret wedding as Wumi herself revealed. Wumi took to social media, Insta stories, shortly after her husband passed to express her pains on the passing of her husband. A part of her post read, This nigger struggled till death. Too many pains, threatening, he has always lived with fears, continuous fights everywhere he goes to. He has never been happy for a whole day. He was called a junkie, a mad person, mental issues, so the public would have another view about him. He's dead. At least you all won. Take your trophy. You all made me a widow at 24 years. Nothing makes him happy no more. Even after seeing his baby, he became more worried. He's now a family man. He doesn't want anything to happen to us. I was supposed to collect my baby's passport yesterday so we could process our traveling. He always says to me, Wumi, please go for my baby's sake. I wouldn't want these people to harm you and him. It will break me. Just go. Let me face them myself. Ileri Oluwa, rest in peace. You really need that Peace. She went ahead to write a couple of other things, but we will leave that out as this already captures what we need to address. Now, there is a reason that I read Wumi's statement because shortly after Wumi gave this impression to the world, we began to see several videos and pictures and testimony and accounts of how Mubad was bullied, battered, tortured, and oppressed by Sam Larry, who many people believe was working under the orders or in collaboration of Naira Mali, his former record label boss. And it was popular belief that Naira Mali and Sam Larry conspired to make Mobat's life unbearable because he chose to leave the record label. That is the word on the street. So it seemed like Wumi's account was largely corroborated by the many evidences that began to pour in. It seemed like he passed because of the suffering and the abuse and the problem and trauma that he had suffered. So a lot of sympathy began pouring in for Wumi. With many people, celebrities, public figures, everyone contributing resources in favor of their child, Lem, who was only five months old when Mobad passed. But how Wumi momentarily went from a young widow who was attracting sympathy and empathy from everyone to social media's prime suspect in the death of her husband was born due to a combination of these reasons. First, a voice note purportedly between Mobad and Wumi made it out to the internet and in that voice note Mobad was very offended, very upset. A good chunk of it was said in Yoruba, their native dialect. And it is said that in that voice note, he said that if anything happens to him, Wumi is responsible. Two, now that the police have officially addressed the media and they have revealed that the immediate cause of Mobad's death was a reaction, a trigger, from the injections an unqualified nurse administered to him at home. A lot of people fingered it as mischievous of Wumi to have stayed silent about the immediate circumstances surrounding her husband's death, lamenting on social media about him being attacked and bullied and lied against and beaten and leaving out the core of the issue. It is their belief that she painted the situation a little bit differently what actually happened shortly before his demise. Thirdly, people have queried and faulted her for allowing an unqualified nurse to treat her husband instead of taking him to a proper medical facility or hospital. Come on, they could afford it. They had the means. So they wondered why she chose to let Mobad receive treatment at home. Fourthly, 
people are curious as to why Wumi has chosen to remain silent in the eyes of these many accusations that are being heaped on her on a daily. They believe that if she was innocent, she should come out, in fact she should long have come out and defend herself and state her own part of the story, of the incidents that led to the fight, of what happened when she was in the car and Mobat's friend was crying, of the hasty burial, of the supposed injection administered to Mobad. They believe that she has so much to say, she has so much defending to do, why is she quiet? They have interpreted her silence as an admission of guilt. 5. People have drawn all sorts of assumptions about the cause of that altercation that she had with Mubad that eventually led to a fight between him and his best friend. Some have labelled it as a result of her infidelity. So many theories have come out about the cause of that fight, with some even saying that she may have conspired with Prime Boy to trigger Mubad to a fight so as to hit him with Juju. And lastly, the biggest elephant, not just an elephant, the biggest dinosaur in the room. People have hinged their belief on Wumi not just being a prime suspect, but that person responsible for Mubad's deaths. From a certain blog, who came up with the story that Wumi and Sam Larry were involved in a sexual relationship and they both conspired to kill Mobad. They went as far as pushing the narrative that Liam, Mobad's son, was not his child but the product of the adultery between Wumi and Mobad's aggressor, Samla. With all these aforementioned, people consider Wumi the prime suspect in her husband's death and wondered why the police did not list her as a suspect when they granted that press briefing. Now let us discuss all the points raised and the various views that have now emerged, either supporting these claims or refuting it. First, on the issue of Liam being Sam Larry's child, people desirous of truth and facts, not rumors and social media trends, have searched everywhere for evidence to support that claim and they have found none. It was even rumored that there was a DNA test conducted in Dubai, in a hospital in Dubai, that showed that the child belongs to Sam Larry. Some people even started inferring some resemblance between the child and Sam Larry. But these set of people who are thirsty and hungry and dying for facts are still yet to come across any documents, any pictures, any statements, anything at all to support that assumption. All that was found was unconfirmed words of mouth with no concrete evidence or report supporting it. But because that fed an already existing narrative, that fed a convenient line of thought, so many people ran along with it without bothering for any confirmation. So please, in the interest of the many people watching, if anyone has any concrete evidence, and when I say evidence, I mean something in the likes of a document, the DNA test results showing that paternity of Liam belongs to Sam Larry, and not just a report from a blog. Please be kind to refer us to that document so we can all peruse it, be certain of it, and take notes. It will be important to add here that it seems like Wumi has eventually bowed to the pressure of conducting a DNA test on her child. Michael Charles, aka OGB Recent, a very